more than happy to stream, record. You can put my name in your title. I don't care. <laughs> uh oh. Well, well, found a dead body. Um, that I did. Uh, wait. What you see in there? <laughs> Again. No okay. I am not self-reporting. I swear to fucking God. <laughs> Hey y'all, Renegades here, and uh, god, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to carbon copy Scott Wozniak to the point of where it's actually kind of nauseating. Dude, people gave him so much grief, I had no idea when he first started he got so much damn grief. Oh dude, it... People called him a, uh, John Tron clone. That, well, everyone, well, no, well, that's the like, thing. What? Everyone calls everyone like, oh dude, you're so, you're trying to copy so-and-so. It's just like every video gaming YouTuber that does the stand and talk, like Scott, like John, like all of them. They're like, oh, this guy's just an AVN clone, dude. This guy's just so friggin' AVN clone. Like what Metal Jesus does. Hell, Metal Jesus rocks inspired the whole uh, gaming on a budget, looking for games thing because he did a, a game search with his crew and stuff. And how many people have played video games online and recorded it and put it on there, like? You could say they're a clone of pretty much everybody on YouTube back in the day, you know, that first started on YouTube. It was mostly gaming. Yeah. It, you know? Again, yeah. dude, you can't you can't please everyone. That's the thing. Well, People the are Power Rangers, dude. Well, they yeah. They're literal rip-offs from Japan. Holy you know, they, crap. They you literally ain't ripped off a whole series from Japan. Oh, yeah. And we love it. And made, Hi and it. made Hayam Saban a literal billionaire. Boy. Uh, like, imagine that. Imagine. He still can't believe it. No, I, of course he. Can, of course he can, man. Regular like media mogul businessman. He was just like told, was like, oh hey, this footage we can actually buy the rights to, and then we can repurpose it and reuse it and make our own show out of it. He was lo a and behold genius for that. Oh yeah, genius for that. And he's a billionaire because of. But it. good on Scott, you know. Good on Scott. Dude, well, he'll upload a video, and two days later, it's it's through the roof. You know. Well, people appreciate what he's doing. And and, and here's the thing: people like perseverance is yeah. the big thing. That's just like when Joe Rogan started his podcast. Yeah. When Joe Rogan started his it podcast, was everyone was like looking at it like a joke. Mm -hmm. I, I remember Adam Carolla. Who had the previous record for like most downloaded podcasts before Joe Rogan? Uh, people were asking Adam Carolla, you know, once he said, "Oh, I'm in the podcasting game," and there were people who were like walking up to him who knew him professionally. They were like walking up to him, like real serious, and just like, "Dude, dude, are you, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you know, you're in this podcasting thing now, and that's not like that's not really like a viable medium." Well, like this was back in like radio, the like man, the late the late two thousands. Anything where where it was long form conversation was filled with nothing but just like nut jobs. And you and I talked about like the Switch OLED and how of a disappointment how disappointed we were in I'm it. I'm thrilled. No, well, no, because I don't have to upgrade. No, me neither. <laughs> and me Nintendo said they are not looking to upgrade the components of their units anytime soon. And then Steam came in and was just like, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is... The handheld stream machine, or Steam machine. Exactly. And just dropped a big, fat people's elbow right in the heart of Nintendo. Maybe. And Well, from what it's looking like, dude... From what people are saying, from what it looks like, maybe. The accessibility thing is where I think they could win. It is hard to get a Switch. If they make it easy to get a Steam Deck, well, you the have the price point I get, but physically being able to get it. Well, and I think the one thing they have to do is they have to take into account the scalpers market. They'll have to they'll have to do something have about to. that. But all right, let's go ahead and get into this, everyone. This is a console's perfect fit by Scott the Waz. Let's get this up on screen. Here we go. Hey y'all, Scott here. I finally found my fourth calling in life. A match made in heaven. I finally opened up my own tattoo parlor. Welcome to the scab <laughs> lab. lab. You ever think to yourself, man, skin. Well, this is <laughs> yes. the place for all you tattoo chow hounds, such as myself. And if you're lucky, you get your picture in the No Infections Club. We give oh out free samples, God. and if you don't like it, I am so sorry for what I just did. Of course, to prove how much I believe in our product, I will give myself a sleeve. I'm thinking blue today. 
the business and I weren't a good fit. Sometimes two things just go together. <laughs> Seth? He did that on carpet. Look, you see it on... I know. I, I see that right there and I'm just like, no. I bet that's got to be icing or something. There's no way. Even then, though, the dot. God, Scott the Wise, man. All about video games. Practicality, probably not the strong suit for this one. What are you doing, man? The business and I weren't a good fit. Sometimes two things just go together. Seven, if you're open-minded. And with every new video game console Jesus. released with new unique features, it gets me thinking about what games would be a match made in heaven for it. On the opposite end of things though, some games just don't make sense on some consoles, but damn it, they pull through. Like Boogie on PlayStation 2. You think God knew this would be a thing eventually? Motion control dancing game on Wii, ported to PS2 three months later. After all, those players were sending us death threats. I mean, so many Wii games were also made available on the PlayStation 2 and vice versa, but most of those games were standard video games, ones that made sense with a normal controller in mind. But you get games like Boogie and Rayman Raving Rabbids going multi-platform that really only make sense on the Wii. They were all about crazy motion controls, but I'm a real gamer. I need a controller to play Nintendogs, not that f***y touchscreen. According to Wikipedia, although anticipation was high for the game, it received negative reviews. Yeah. Boogie! Better than the sequel's Wikipedia page, the second Ooh. line is denying the rumor of Wii Balance Port support. Hey, the people have to know. But those are examples of games that just don't feel right on certain platforms, which just goes to show the Wii was the perfect place for them. Xbox nabbed exclusive games in certain series for the entirety of its existence. Series that were PlayStation staples like Odd World and Tomb Raider were exclusive to Xbox consoles, which didn't feel off as much as they felt dirty. Like, come on guys, you paid to make Rise of the Tomb Raider exclusive for a year and was it really worth it? Does this game's blood scream Xbox? But then you have no. the perfect fit, which in some cases yes. are games that never even happen. How in God's oh. name did a new Pokemon Snap game not release on Wii U? It's the perfect console for Here. You want to know why it didn't happen, Scott? You want to know why? Because God hated the Wii U. And, and also, so and so did Nintendo, because apparently their advertising core was just like, let's advertise it look, as an accessory. Look, the literal keyboard and mouse that you have in your lap was the size of that tablet controller thing. That I do not want... To be lugging around, let me tell you something, Scott. I know you love that broke back bitch of a console that didn't fucking work out, but you're gonna have to get over it. Move on, let's talk about the future, but will you shut the fuck up about the Wii U? The end. Da -dun, da -da -da -dun. We'll get some Dasani water, because I want to pay for my tap water, bitch. You're a pussy. I love the taste of uh, fluoride. Around with it and snap pictures with the trigger. I mean, that sounds fucking abhorrent, but I'm thinking this Look from Nintendo's perspective. Thing. They love bullshit like this. And honestly, so it wouldn't have been that pass. bad. They had the idea of using this thing as a camera in other games, namely Fatal Frame. They funded Fatal Frame on Wii U, but not Pokemon Snap. They had Miiverse. You could share your Pokemon pictures with other Wii U owners within your own secret club. Like, Here I don't goes. already do that, but still. Come to think of it, the Nintendo 3DS could have had a Pokemon Snap using Fatal Frame as another example. It's always my best excuse. There's yes, a Fatal Frame on your did spirit it. camera using augmented reality, which Pokemon famously did with Pokemon Go on smart devices. So you could have made this a bad true. Pokemon Snap game this way. In the end, I'm happy they waited until the Nintendo Switch to bring Snap back via new Pokemon Snap, as there's no really gimmicks now. like what I've been talking about. Just a pure new Snap game. But I love nonsense like this, and Nintendo does too. Because of that, it's just puzzling to me they didn't bring the series back on these platforms as they had gimmicks primed for a new game. Pardon my French, but I'm gonna talk about Wii U more. Minecraft was uh. a game that felt tailored made for the Wii U. With that being said, what the hell is this version of Minecraft? Nintendo built up a massive announcement in late 2015 with it being Minecraft Wii U Edition. No matter how you slice it, that was a big deal for Nintendo. Let them have this moment. But the concept of Minecraft on Wii U was perfect. That gamepad touchscreen would have made item management and crafting a dream. To which the developer of Minecraft Wii U Edition said, eh, that would have been cool. Minecraft Wii U Edition ended up being nothing more than a straight port of Minecraft. Yeah, and that's the problem. See, if there is ways for them to implement the technology in, or if anything, you know what? How's about the handheld thing? You know, if people actually want to do the motion control thing, and actually, like, walk with this one and... Let me put a scenario in there for you. So if you're... Let's yeah. say the game developers... Uh -huh. are like 
racehorse breeders. And 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 the consoles are the racehorse that gets developed. <clears throat> yeah. If you accidentally bred together this thing that turned out to the racehorse version of the Wii U, and you're interested in winning races and making all that money that comes from winning, are you going to invest in what makes that deformed, decrepit horse better? Or are you going to just move on to the hold, next? Hold product? on, hold on. I know, I know a perfect analogy. As like, Im imagine if you will, like you have your regular thoroughbreds here, and then you have the Wii U. This is not your guy. <laughs> the, sorry, dude, Scott. <laughs> the Wii U is not that guy. Like here we it's have. It's just not that like, guy. Like here we have the Xbox. Here we have like. The Xbox lagging behind, then you have the PlayStation, you have like the PlayStation and everything, and then we have the Wii U is not that guy. Pal. It's like I have touchpad controller. Not that guy, pal. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. And, I'm sorry. And that's why that didn't get added. Do you know why? Because by the time they were even considering that, I guarantee you the thought process was like. How do we move on from here? Also, don't forget, Nintendo, for the longest time, has not been the friendliest to third-party developers. Case oh, in yeah. point, the N64. When everyone switched to disc, this is the reason why PlayStation took over the friggin' world. They dominated. They took over the world with the PlayStation 1 because of the amount of third-party apps that was on it. Yes. Because uh, Nintendo wasn't well, the only horse in town anymore. Also, for being only for kids, really killed them with the PS. Uh, the PS original because well PS one what the fuck did I just say yeah but because we it was our generation and we didn't want to be seen as little kids we no. wanted to be like the cool teenagers and like people that were on MTV and shit yeah like, the edgy teens we wanted and, to be those know. and they were all about PlayStation one Twisted Metal Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and all hell that. yeah man. that Tony Hawk came later for the Nintendo sixty four but at the front end. They were the badass teenager, cool, extremely well, yeah. edgy. Because, well, they had Resident <clears throat> Evil. Yeah. They had great titles that, you know, young, you know, kids who are, like, just about to turn into their teen, you know, yeah. teenage years are just like, oh, dang. Which kind like of forced that. them to be more, we're worrying about our own shit right now. We've got this demographic. We dominate, and it will, we will withstand anything with it. Yeah, except yeah. here's the thing. Those kids eventually grow up into young adults, and when you know your edgy game, your edgiest game is literally a uh, foul-mouthed uh, squirrel who vom who drinks too much and vomits. Which don't get me wrong, I love that game. I love Conquer's Bad but Fur Day. But they didn't push it. But that's uh, no, they didn't <clears throat> because it was M rated. Yeah. And when that is your edgiest game, and you don't put your faith in it and all that, in spite of it being a great game, I mean. You lose. You, you you lose the next generation. For multiple reasons. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why PlayStation and PlayStation 2 literally destroyed everything. Slaughtered. And there was no competition. And then, it wasn't until Nintendo got with the gimmicks. They got with the Wii. And they started doing like the motion controls. And they started bringing in more casual gamers. Like mm -hmm. The one thing that the Wii really brought in to gaming big time was the elderly. Because there were these so many people who were over the age of 65. Like Scott the Wongs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bad, no real exclusive gameplay tweaks taking advantage of the Wii U's interface, no touch screen support, and no advantages to using the gamepad. It was just Minecraft. So yeah, Minecraft was a perfect fit for the Wii U. But all we ended up getting was Minecraft on the Wii U. I mean, I guess there's actually touchscreen support, but it's not intuitive. I was thinking a setup on the bottom screen designed for touch, not shoehorning it in as a secondary input that barely registers half the time. After yeah. responding justifiably to such a port, I've got to ask, how did Ape Escape never go to the PlayStation Vita? Ape Escape was the go-to game on PlayStation 1, showcasing how dual analog control I think it should have. I think yeah. it should have. It would have been great. It was Sony's first dedicated handheld with two sticks, but you had all this other stuff. Cameras, a touchscreen, a back touchscreen, augmented reality, 3G cellular. What I would give for an Ape Escape game to use 3G. The PlayStation Vita was more advanced than my immune system, and while a few games definitely took advantage of and showed the potential of it, I just feel like an Ape Escape would have been a no-brainer. Its initial reason for existence was to validate 
validate a controller, so why not validate all this other junk? Or even the PlayStation VR, when that released for PS4, I think Ape Escape would have been great to push on that platform, that especially crazy. considering VR is where old series go to die. Looking forward to a new Chibi Robo VR game. It's like it's not good right in front of me. Speaking <laughs> of PlayStation, Sony released the PlayStation TV, TV so we didn't have to. It was a tiny box, so it was fun and an just the PlayStation TV. Vita. Yeah. They had a PlayStation TV. And you've got one. And I have one, the 3D TV. Oh god. And a PlayStation TV. Do, do you know did you know that uh that Austin Evans actually he's he's like, I'm gonna build the perf the ultimate PlayStation 3. And they were just like, we have here the PlayStation TV. No, not that one. And like he had one of those and like threw it to the side. This one. And he points to the side. Yeah. And it's literally like the same one you have, and he's just like, Ken. How much did we pay for this? And Ken's just like, I don't want to talk about it. Because those things are going for big money, especially if they still work. Yeah, mine still works. Thank God. <laughs> for now, it has been flickering, so I don't know how the fuck long that's going to last. Oh, no. That's not it's good. It's one of those, like, I don't remember which screen it is, but they go out and then it's... Yeah, it's once they go, that's gone. it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Without any of the extra garbage. So it wasn't a PlayStation Vita. This was during the great boom of media streaming boxes. You buy a Roku or Apple TV and you're set for life. The PlayStation TV was just that, except it couldn't stream anything. This was just a PlayStation Vita without the screen, yet the yep. way they marketed it was like it was a streaming box, even though it couldn't play Netflix. Never got Netflix support, and if you wanted to stream basically any video apps, you had to connect it to your PS4, control your PS4 through remote play through the PlayStation TV, and then watch the supported apps through that, which still didn't always work. How can nope. you name a product? Like the PlayStation TV when there's barely anything TV about it. Just call it. Oh, hello. Hello. I am terribly sorry about that, everyone. My mother calls me every now and again to make sure that, you know, I'm still alive. He was buying smack. Don't let that man lie to you. For God's sakes, man. You can tell he's on speed. Okay, Look first off, I don't want people out there knowing that my mom sells smack, dude. You know this. I mean, she's she's already got a bad enough reputation as is. I mean, half the internet's already, like, half our fandom's already in love with my mother. By the way, thanks for that, y'all. Jesus. It's like high school all over she's again. She's a married woman. Jesus. You think that stopped the kids back in high school from saying shit? Hell no. Hell, that just laid it on even thicker. It's just like, oh, man. You know, if your parents get divorced, that means I'm going to be your new daddy. And I'm just like... Motherfucker, I'm going to wring your neck until the fucking eyes, your eyes pop out of your head. <clears throat> People were savage, dude. They didn't care. And they still don't care because the anonymity of the internet. Anyway, Scott the Wash. PlayStation Mini or something. Instead, honestly, I bet a few people bought this wanting to stream movies, and in the end, it caused more harm than good. I'm doing soliciting. Yeah, so Netflix would have been a perfect fit for the PlayStation TV, because it yeah. would have made the thing make actual sense. Oh, it's been that long? The Call of Duty games, honest to God, were the perfect fit on Wii U, and they cut them off too soon. You got the HD graphics and traditional controller support, plus Wii Remote and Nunchuck support. It's crazy, I know, but some people like them. You get far more I, precision, I it and it's good. basically as close yeah. to keyboard and mouse you could get on a console while also having its own benefits like an actual analog stick. But on top of that, you got split-screen multiplayer without the split-screen. One player on the gamepad, one on the TV. Yes. Frankly, Call of Duty and Wii U was a total match made in heaven, and I'm a proud member of that club. How did the DS get more entries? Population I guess Scott. I could say the same about the PlayStation Vita or PSP. The fact that those only got one Call of Duty each is yes. obviously shocking. The PSP may have only had one stick, but I find it weird that it only got one Call of Duty before the series hit it big with Modern Warfare. And the PlayStation Vita only got one Call of Duty as well, but fun fact, it was bad. You'd think with the more hardcore nature of the PlayStation handhelds, Sony would have courted Activision more for Call of Duty games on the handheld, but no, the Engage got just as many. The DS? Oh. It's weird. It's just weird. Sometimes I just have to be honest and tell it how it is. You may call Subway employees sandwich artists, I call them alchemists. Like, why was Castlevania Requiem put out on PS4 only? A collection of Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night right after Castlevania characters were revealed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate exclusive to the Nintendo Switch? You put out a collection on the wrong platform. Same goes for the Disney Afternoon Collection, a compilation of old-school Nintendo games. Oh, the Capcom. They don't want to put that on a Nintendo system. Mega Man Legacy Collection, released in 2015 for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. But not Wii U, the system where most of Mega Man's fans were. He was in Smash Brothers, but a good chunk of classic Mega Man games were already available on the system. You 
or 6, which is what Legacy Collection contained. So a compilation of games that are already available on the Wii U it didn't make a ton of sense. I get that. But they still put the game on 3DS where all these games are also available in the eShop. What was going on here? Michael Jackson's The Experience, another motion control dancing game. A perfect match for Wii and Xbox 360's Kinect. Yeah. What about Nintendo DS, 3DS, PSP, and Vita versions? Why? Don't forget the Mac. I never do. Honestly, more often oh. than not, it seems like publishers go out of their way to ensure their game doesn't go on the right systems. All right, here's something that totally should have happened. Punch out on the 3DS. With the 3D display, I feel like you could have done a ton of great things with depth and timing your dodges. Punch out's always been a game of reading your opponent's movements and dodging at just the right time. So if the 3D display would have been utilized properly, it would have been easier to know exactly where the fist is in relation to your face and when exactly to block or dodge. You could have also done some fun in your face 3D effects, and I think Punch-Out on Wii's art style would have looked really good on the handheld. Now, for games that would have been perfect on Wii, Luigi's Mansion. What? Why did this not happen? The GameCube game had controls that could have perfectly yeah. used the Wii Remote's pointer! And, yeah. and the fact that, okay, the fact that it went to the 3DS, and then after that, don't get me wrong, we got one on the Switch, and I'm happy we got one on the Switch, but yeah, I agree with Scott here. The motion controls, like, yeah. around with Luigi's, uh, uh, light and then, yeah, that he was great about, or he was right about how great it was for Call of Duty too. The, yeah, the Wii mode, but oh, I dude. only played on the Wii. I played Modern Warfare the first one. Uh, and it was really fun. I was going to say the zapper thing where you actually have the thing where you can like do that, uh, dude. I would have loved that. Yeah, I would, I, I would have loved to play that on on Wii U. Instead, they opted to bring the game to 3DS for the 3D display, which I am. A Crazy mixed on. Luigi's Mansion was originally tested with stereoscopic 3D, which was later scrapped, so the game appearing on the 3DS was almost like finally bringing justice to a badass idea. In reality, some people didn't think the remake was badass, but it was ass bad. It's incredibly commendable. They got the original Luigi's Mansion to work on the system as well as it did, and seeing it in 3D is a cool way to rectify that original idea. But this was too little too late. Luigi's Mansion for 3DS came out in 2018, which finally gave my watch purpose. People didn't want to play on the 3DS at this point, they just wanted to play Nintendo Switch games. The 3DS can't get it up and has a resolution of 4. It's like, cool, but it's 2018, and I want this game in HD. So, I'm conflicted about this. I feel like the Wii would have been the perfect system for the original Luigi's Mansion, but the 3DS is a great choice. This remake just would have been way better if it was back in 2015 or something. But I I have to say, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was born to be a 3DS game. The title originated on the yeah. Wii U and was a continuation of these types of stages that were in Super Mario 3D World, which was a sequel to Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS, and that made 3D World feel not super at home on Wii U because it felt made for the 3DS, and when Captain Toad came out for 3DS, it felt like the circle had been completed. Ever since July 13th, 2018, I felt accomplished. Treasure Tracker stages feel like living dioramas. You can jump and have to traverse them by rotating them fully around, figuring out where to go. With that 3D display and how short the levels are, this feels right at home on the handheld, more so than the more popular Nintendo Switch board. I'm putting the Switch version of the game in the weird choice category, especially since it came out quite a while before Super Mario 3D World did for the Switch. I mean, that game makes far more sense logistically on Switch. Captain Toad had a lot more of the Wii U gamepad's DNA baked into the experience. A lot of Wii U games never felt like they took full advantage of the gamepad enough, or if they did, it was a total gimmick. Captain Toad was designed fully around the thing, not to the point that it makes the game more fun or completely unplayable without it, but looking at the Switch version, a lot of this feels way shoehorned on. Any touchscreen or microphone business had to be reworked on Switch. On the 3DS, it just feels made for the system. And when a game feels made for a system it wasn't even made for, that shows you how well it fits. And speaking of Mario 3D World, Fair. I have opinions. Considering Captain Toad got ported to 3DS, it almost made me want to see what 3D World would look like on the handheld. I mean, its direct predecessor was a 3DS game. I felt like if Nintendo was really strapped for cash, they could have attempted a 3D World port on the 3DS, to which I don't think it would be that bad. The game would have 3D support, and in many cases, I think would feel more at home. But overall, I actually think Super Mario 3D World and Super Mario Odyssey should have swapped consoles. Mario Odyssey has a ton of enemies you can capture and control, and I feel like that is prime for Wii U gamepad fodder. Plus, the world map you can bring up feels like mm. it would have worked really well on the bottom screen at all times. 3D World having quick bite-sized levels just works with the handheld form factor of the Nintendo Switch, plus being multiplayer-focused is what the console's all about. But I've talked about the Wii U enough. 
For now. Why not go in the exact <laughs> opposite direction and talk about some dumb bullshit I know nothing about? The Persona series has been consistently tied to PlayStation consoles, but spin-off titles, those could be anywhere. Hide. I never got that. If anything, it made sense to make the core series multi-platform and then put the spin-offs on a limited number of consoles, because why would the fighting game spin-off sequel to Persona 4 on a console that's never gotten Persona 4 do better than Persona 4? Persona 4 Arena and Arena Ultimax came to Xbox 360. Persona 4 was a PlayStation exclusive for the longest time, and these were really the only- And then Persona 4 Golden was a exclusive to the Vita. I'm just biting my tongue as hard as I can right now. Yeah, the, This it, is a sensitive subject for me. Cause, well, yeah, we well, know I'm how you feel. I'm in the middle of playing Strikers right now, and it's a good game, so I don't know where the Only Persona games on Xbox, Xbox at the time. Persona 5 Strikers was a sequel to Persona 5 while being a spin-off hack and slash at the same time, and came to Nintendo Switch. But it came out without the original Persona 5 on the platform. Why put these spin-offs on systems, but not the actual games? If you're confident enough these spin-offs will do well, what makes you think the games they're based off of that got critical acclaim across the board wouldn't? I guess Atlas at the time assumed 360 owners didn't want RPGs and just wanted fighting games. But it would have made more sense to me if they just fully committed to the series being PlayStation exclusive, rather than sprinkling spin-offs on other systems. We're gonna give people Persona Q2. It's filled with fan service and is on a platform that never got any of the games it references. But sometimes, games like to roll with the idea of being an imperfect fit for the console they're on. Take, for example, any M-rated games on the Wii and DS. Like Mad World, the whole gimmick of this game is that it's incredibly gruesome and bloody, and it's on the Wii. It almost felt like an in-joke. Let's put this gory game on the yeah, Wii. Yeah, I remember that game. all of money, game. but it'll that be was... really funny. Weirdly enough, the fact Mad World didn't fit on the Wii at all made it fit that much more. I yeah. can't imagine this game on anything but the Wii. Opposites attract, and I could say the same about the House of the Dead franchise, yeah. but in reality, this is perfect on the Wii through and through. Light gun games kind of died out there, especially on consoles. You need specific hardware for them all, and regular first-person shooters were just more appealing to people. But the Wii brought them back with its pointer functionality. House of the Dead 2, 3, and Overkill work perfectly here. Yeah. It may feel out of place with Overkill being one of the top sayer f**ks in all of gaming, but this series was- What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? The top sayer of fucks. <laughs> ain't no, ain't nothing wrong with that, bruh. House of the Dead Overkill has the most swearing ever. That is a title I would hold up gladly. Yeah. I'd put it on a, I, I'd put it on. <laughs> most sayer of fucks. Most sayer of fucks. Yeah. I, hell, I'd put it on support beam senpai. Yeah. Yeah was right at home on the console. Same could be said for Sin and Punishment. They brought this Japan exclusive series back for the Wii worldwide because it was an unreal shooter. And it works flawlessly here, and honestly gives me a lot of hope for revivals like this. Sometimes, you just have to wait until that perfect piece of hardware comes out. Beautiful. You can't just put whatever out on every single Beautiful. console. It pays to love be patient that sometimes. I thought as a kid, Super love Smash that Bros. Game. would be perfect on Nintendo DS, or even a 2D sprite-based one on Game Boy Advance. I was wrong, but I think they could have made a great stripped-down version, though they decided to wait until the Nintendo 3DS to make a portable Smash Bros., and that was probably for the best. And I thought Star Star Fox would have been perfect on Wii. You move the ship around with the nunchuck, oh, game with the Wii remote. Yeah. Even had a little micro game about it in WarioWare Smooth Moves. But just we came and went, and we never got a Star Fox. But that was probably because they had an even better idea for the next console. Bad example, but you get what I mean. You just have to wait for the right time to bring Metroid Prime back. Why was Federation Force on 3DS? You're making a multiplayer first-person shooter and you put it on this thing? The only reason they did this that makes sense is because the 3DS was cheaper to develop for because when you think about what system makes the most sense for a co-op multiplayer first-person shooter with tons of online elements, yeah, sure, pick the stupid pick. I think a lot of games are great to see on the Game Boy Color. I'm mainly talking DX ports, like with what happened to Link's Awakening. Originally a Game Boy game brought over to color with a few enhancements. Just the fact it was in full color this time honestly wasn't enough, but some random extra tweaks were done to truly make this the definitive version. Games like Super Mario Land 2 are for the love of God, Metroid 2 would have been perfect candidates for Game Boy Color releases. Yeah. A lot of games made for the wrong platform, well, they can be rectified later down the line. Mario Party the Top 100, I swear to God. You're gonna compile the best 100 minigames from across the home console Mario Parties and put them on the 3DS and not even acknowledge the handheld ones at all? You're gonna put this game out with just one really bad game board to play multiplayer on? This was just done to put something out on the 3DS that holiday. It was obviously made not to celebrate the series with... Although they have rectified this by doing Mario Party Superstars, mm -hmm. which is going to be... Essentially a, the same thing. Yeah. A compilation. A compilation, but it's going to use the classic, a lot of the classic boards from the older Mario Party games, which... Yes! Could, 
could make things tense between us, Nate. Why is, uh, well, I mean... We may get in some feuds over this. I mean, honestly, yeah, there's already people out there who want to wring my neck because of <laughs> me whipping their ass at Mario Kart. I mean... Uh, I And here's the thing. I have... I fully invited my sisters and, like, and like a few friends down here, a few friends down here, to uh, participate in Mario Kart with me, w with the full intention of me literally whipping their asses so bad they never want to come back here. I'm I do that just to test them to see if they can handle it. But what? I mean, honestly, as much as they've as much as they've like laid on me and everything, because the Rainbow Road <clears throat> barbarian over here. Rainbow Road. Shit. The gang of Scott of Rainbow Shit. Road. Shit. Baby Park Assassin. More like it. I am unbeatable on that ass motherfucker. Assassin? Yeah. You want them assassins? I am the assest of assassins. Damn. Which is what the marketing would lead you to believe. It was developed because it was easier to make than a brand new Mario Party from scratch. And put it on the 3DS because just like Federation Force, it's just flat out easier to do that. And Mario Party on a handheld and not a home console is like ordering deep dish pizza with no cheese, sauce, and extra olives. Go ahead, try it. Thankfully, we got more chances with new Metroids and Mario Parties on systems that make more sense. But Mario yes. Party only got like two games on the Wii, which is like, what? The Wii was really a party good game machine. Yeah. How did the GameCube yeah. get four of them, but the Wii only got half of that? I mean, obviously, the developer behind the scenes was going through some changes, so they couldn't GameCube really do a lot for a while. So at the time, I it did, yes. That's why they did that, I think. It needed games. Yeah. I was thinking, wow, Nintendo's really showing restraint not putting 11 Mario parties on the Wii. When in reality, Nintendo couldn't bear the weight. Some things just fit a console perfectly. Oh, it's shocking Mario not Kart more 9. Uh, no, 8 was great. 9 yeah. is. 9, I. Um, hmm. The less I say about that, the better. Because. You hated it. Everyone's in a fucking car. Yeah. That defeats the purpose of the map. The map is supposed to be you can go in any you can go in different directions and the star can appear literally anywhere yeah. on the map. Instead it's just like, oh, let's all race to the end in a car. Everyone everyone donates to the gas fund by hitting the fucking block. No. Stupid idea. Like football games on the Dreamcast, yes. Wii U, GameCube with Game Boy Advance connected, pretty much anything with a personal screen on your controller. You can pick what you want to do without anybody else seeing. It truly makes me wish 08 was on the Dreamcast and thank Christ 09 wasn't. But that dual screen experience made games like The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, Pac-Man vs, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles possible. But the act of owning multiple Game Boy Advances and Link cables made these games messier than they had to be. So, they waited to put some of them on consoles without the personal screen? God. Damn it! Why wasn't Pac-Man vs. on Wii U? It would've been perfect! They used one Game Boy Advance for a player playing as Pac-Man, then all the other players play as Ghost on the TV, and you're telling me they didn't put this on Wii U, but Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures 2 made the cut? But then they put it on Switch! Like, cool, but why did you skip out on the console when it made perfect sense on? Fort Swords Adventures remade on Wii U? It would've been perfect as well! The dual screen experience, it could've been the first time they allowed for multiple gamepads on one system! But, no! They remade Twilight Princess, a game I could already play on the Wii U. Like, come on! Why couldn't they release a USB adapter to play 3DS games on here? You have everything you need! You could have had one screen on the gamepad, the other on the TV. They re-released DS games digitally on the Wii U eShop. Let us play our 3DS games on this thing! I mean, sure, Super Mario Maker is a perfect fit on Wii U, but you wait to take all your dual-screen games from the GameCube and put them on other platforms after the Wii U. Eternal Darkness would be crazy with the Wii U gamepad! Or, like, an actual Chibi Robo game, you could do a bunch of stuff with the gamepad moving it around, or just actual sequels to a bunch of their DS games. You have a dual screen with a TV there. You can do so much with it. So, long story short, the Wii U's great. The Long story short, Scott, I will say this. In your mind, the Wii U is great. For me, the Wii U was a missed opportunity. Yeah, same with the Vita. And, and here's the thing. I'm not saying your opinion's invalid. I'm just saying I don't care. I'm just joking. I do I, care about Scott's opinion. Scott's opinion is very bad. That's that's on oh, my list. Oh, I've got one. Yeah, I, 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 I want to get one and mod it. Because uh, I actually get, let Quinn borrow it for now because Quinn, mm. uh, Quinn's favorite Zelda game is Wind Waker. And oh. the only place Wind Waker HD is available is on the, the Wii U. Yes. 
So I let Quinn borrow it, and now Quinn is very happy. Quinn's very, yeah. very happy that I let that I let them borrow the uh, the Wii U, and I'm just like, hell yeah! I'm no, glad I, I'm glad I can I contribute. Think it's it's definitely the right hardware. You may want to um, mod the fuck out of it, but if you did that. Mm-hmm. That would be badass. I would love to have a modded Wii U. Well, I mean, Wii U's are going for pretty cheap right now on uh, on eBay. But I do need to speak to this this man, Scott the Waz. We got to talk about your disrespect for Persona and Atlas's ways of doing things. Scott is not an RPG kind of guy. As we know, Atlas is bound and determined to always be involved in some kind of unbelievable fuckery that doesn't make any sense. Yes. They don't try to intentionally take advantage of anybody with this fuckery they just do things that do not make any sense so that being said scott the waz you need to understand what persona strikers is and understand that the game is a solid game the way that they put it out may not have been the best fucking way to do it but it was put out on the switch but it was put out on steam it was put out on ps4 like you 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 aren't bound to the switch to play the game, right? No. It's on PS4, PS or PS5. Yeah. Is it PS4? Or I think it is PS4. It's on PS4, it's on Switch, it's on Steam. Like you've got options to play the game on you know different plays like the PS4 you can play both. Yeah, it came out on Switch and PS4. Uh <clears throat> same time or at the same time yeah because so, in japan it came out a year before it did here in the u.s yes and also came out on windows so yeah, yeah. so i mean <clears throat> you can play it on playstation so is it really the game's fault not really is it really a I, I reflection would, of how good the game again is? again dude scott the wise is not an rpg kind of guy rpgs are not his thing and i get his point as to why you know Persona 5 would not, or would, uh, if the baseline game is not on the system that you're releasing this thing on, yeah. what is the point? I get that, but at the same time, there's a lot of people out there. You look at the two most popular consoles of this generation the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4. Yeah. Usually, a lot of PlayStation owners also own a Nintendo Switch. You know why? Because one is their primary and one is their secondary. Now, yeah. I, and that's and that's the thing. I mean, heck, I own a I own a Switch and I own a PS4. You same deal with you. And that's the thing. I don't mind buying across multiple platforms to play different games as long as it's practical. For instance, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I remember when Dream Drop Distance or when Dream Drop Distance came out. I was just like, wait. They're dro- they're doing this on the Nintendo 3DS. What? Because uh, it confused me. I was like, w- why are they releasing this on the 3DS? This is the first ever like this is the first time I've ever played it on something that was outside of a uh, Sony's wheelhouse. And now Kingdom Hearts is on every platform because Square eventually was just like, oh yeah, we we can do that. Yeah, we can make more money if we make this available. On other platforms. I think and Atlas is on the move that way with Persona. They, I think so, too. I think too. they're going to stick with uh, Shin Megami Tensai on Nintendo stuff, but they're going to shift to Persona as, like, a Final Fantasy-esque yeah, like, Good. title that's on everything. Because yeah. even, like, he was talking about Persona Q and those 3DS games that were made for Persona. Yeah. Those were non-canon. Yeah, those are just... And a lot of the SMT stuff is not, like, tied together. The no, way. no. In, in fact, there's, like, splits in the plot lines constantly where it's like, this could have happened. If you got this <laughs> ending for your last game, then this is the the game for you. I, like, it's crazy. Uh, I, love, uh, I love when, you know, Zelda heads are just like, Zelda has the most complex conf- and confusing timelines. I'm just like... Shin Megami Tensei would like to have a word. <laughs> yeah, well, look how many videos Holy there are fuck. trying to explain it. And at the end of all of them, or at the beginning, they're going, 
this is not official this is just what we think yeah it's <laughs> this is just a theory a game theory. yeah that's Sorry. all that there is there is no official canon explanation to the connection of all the lore in the games there isn't no, and, not really. And they're no. not ever probably going to make one. They're just going to let you interpret it as you will. Well, sometimes there's a benefit to that. There's a benefit yeah. to letting the fandom literally write their own narrative. Because if you don't come out and tell people, yeah. then... Uh, that's just like Nick right now. Nick is on a kick right now where he is wanting to complete all of the Zelda games chronologically. Mm. And he is playing Skyward Sword HD and... He's and he's calling it the Renegade Chronology, which, in all honesty, I'm cool with him doing. Like, like he's talked about you know, making highlight videos and all that, and I'm just like, dude, go for it. Yeah. I mean, because people would like. I think a lot of people out there would like to see a from beginning to the end uh, playthrough of the Legend of, of the Legend of Zelda. Yeah. And I know a lot of people out there hate Skyward Sword, with good reason. Don't get me wrong. I have my problems with Skyward Sword as well, but. I think the HD remaster will help a lot of people be able to play it mm. and be able to finish it without the frustration of the motion controls. Jesus Christ. But anyway, all in all, uh, yeah, consoles be, you know, having perfect fits, you know, game certain games working on one and the others. I'll say this, uh, when developers get bought by certain companies, and they're literally like kneecapped by uh, by the console makers. For instance, Microsoft, when they bought Rare out from under Nintendo, mm. what have they done outside of Viva Pinata? <laughs> what have they done? I know they did Sea of Thieves. Uh oh, sorry, it's from Jacob. Uh, he was uh, sending me something. I'll look at that here in a second. But. They did Sea of Thieves, and Sea of Thieves is great now. Sea of Thieves, in a lot of ways, it, for a lot of people out there, is a great game. I've played it, and it is people a great game. People have been game. asking me to play it. Oh, it's great, dude. Yeah. And plus, where you got the Nintendo, or when you got the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, it's on Game Pass. And, and it's on, cross-platform, I believe. It is. You can play it on mm. the on your Series X, and I can play it on PC. Yeah. And we can have a blast. That would be cool. I mean, quite, I mean, quite literally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Hi. I just finished watching Gentleman Pirates, so I'm ready for it. <laughs> the, the scene where he's like stuffing the guts back in the dude. Yeah. Just kept, and, he, and then he hugged his torso upside down. Oh. Yeah, that shit was hilarious. God. All right. Well, this was a console's perfect fit by Scott the Wise. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully we will see you all in the next one. So I guess until then, everyone, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you, everybody. Peace out.